Hey guys, this is Will at Third and Long. Today, what we're going to be talking about is the ACC expansion that was just announced on Friday morning. So the ACC said that they were going to be expanding to include Stanford, Cal, and SMU. So hit that like button and subscribe. Let's kind of break this down. So what's my opinion on this move? What do I think about this? At the end of the day, you know, it it wasn't really surprising. So they've been talking about it for the last week. It was put up for vote. For vote, uh, Notre Dame was really pushing for it hard for the last what two or three weeks, saying that hey guys, we we have to add these teams. They're great academic schools. They're great sports schools. So they've been really pushing for it. I don't know why Notre Dame was involved in the first place, since they're not involved playing football in the ACC. Only all of their other sports. But anyways, that's a whole nother topic. So I think that this move was not a move of strength at all. This was more of a move of desperation, more of a move a move of survival from the ACC. So basically what it comes down to is strength in numbers. I think that the ACC pretty much thinks they're going to lose Florida State and Clemson possibly as early as next summer, but more probably within the next couple of years coming up. Because every single year that Granite Bright's buyout is going to get smaller and smaller, and it's going to be worth it more and more for Clemson to basically get out of this hot mess. Now, I love the ACC. I love all of the Power 5 conferences. Obviously, the Pac-12 is pretty much gone, but I hate seeing them break up like this. But I think this was kind of a pathetic move from the ACC in all honesty. I think it's a joke. They added two teams that are not good at all at football. All of the realignment moves have been due to football money. Bringing in big brands that are good at football to make more money for the conference. The ACC, hands down, looks pathetic compared to all of the other conferences. So the SEC added Oklahoma and Texas. The Big 12, within the last years, they've added TCU. They've added um, Cincinnati, they added UCF, they added Utah, the Arizona schools. I mean, great pickups. And the Big Ten went on a rampage and they added a whole bunch of teams that made them a massive conference. And the ACC added Cal, Stanford, and SMU. Okay, so obviously they are preparing for Clemson and Florida State to leave, possibly North Carolina as well to leave. So they replace them with two teams that are pathetic at football. And I'm, I mean, okay, this buys you time, but once Florida State and Clemson leave, you're not a power five conference. You're a joke, really. You have Miami, the Tar Heels, and that's basically about it. If those schools even stay. So they're now going to have 18 members, 17 full-time members, and Notre Dame just kind of comes and goes as they please. Now, f- there was originally four AC sc- sorry, a- four ACC schools that had dissented. You had Clemson, FSU, UNC, and NC State. Obviously, three of them still voted no. Clemson, FSU, and UNC. So it was NC State that flipped and voted yes. So they're the culprit that let this disaster happen, basically. Uh, Because the ACC needed 12 of the 15 schools, so 75% in order to get this expansion approved. Now, UNC's athletic director was not happy at all. And obviously, Florida State and Clemson's aren't either because they want out of the conference because they're only making 35 to 40 million on their TV deal, whereas the Big Ten's pushing 80 million. So Rutgers, who's a pathetic football school, is making twice as much as Clemson, who's won two national championships in the last eight years and played for four in the last nine years. That's just not right. Um, And it did not get any better by bringing in two schools that make no money football. So SMU, the way that it, it works out, they're not taking any TV money for nine years. Okay, that's a pretty good pickup. Plus, you get the Dallas market. SMU has a huge NIL deal through their boosters. They have a $100 million stadium upgrade going on right now. One of their boosters just gave the football program $60 million. So they're obviously floating in some cash, and they just wanted to get into the Power 5, basically. Um, But that's pretty good. So now when it comes to Stanford and Cal, 
they're only getting 30% revenue starting next year for the first seven years. Okay, so that's good for the ACC. And then in year nine, that goes up to 75%. And then they get full in year 10. Whoopity do full 35 to $40 million in 2034. Whereas the Big Ten and the SEC will now be on their second contracts since those contracts come up due around like 2028 and 2030. So if they're making 70 to 80 million now, they'll be making 100 million then, and the ACC will be making their 35 to 40 million. That's how pathetic this is. So everyone says Stanford is the gold standard when it comes to sports, but the problem is, is it's the gold standard in sports no one cares about. So great, they have a great swim team, they have a great gymnastics team, they get represented at the Olympics, that's great. That's good complementary sports, but all of this realignment is solely due to football. Football is the only sports that make money for the sports programs. So we're adding these teams in to suck money out of the new coming grant of rights. They'll be running deficits at their programs because they have a good swim team because they have a good gymnastics team that nobody watches. Okay, so these other sports, they're so good at that none of the other conferences wanted them. Just think about that for one second. No other conference wanted Stanford's illustrious gymnastics team, except really the pathetic ACC, who basically came there and picked up the table scraps that all of the other conferences left. So it's like that saying, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, it doesn't make a sound. Okay, if Stanford's gymnastic team wins a championship, but no one watched it and no one cares, does it matter? No, and this is not an insult to those other schools at all. That's great that they're good at those sports, and I'm not knocking those sports. But, but it's the issue that the whole realignment process is due around football. So it's solely football-focused, best brands in football. So this move should have been about football, and it wasn't. It was just, give us your scraps, and we will take it because we need more teams in case some teams leave the conference so that we don't get dissolved like the Pac-12. At, at this point, if those teams leave, I would rather the ACC just get dissolved. If you want to see where I think those other teams would go, just scroll down through my videos because I have a whole video on that of where I think their best fits are. So basically, no one wanted these teams, but good for Stanford, good for Cal, good for SMU. I'm happy for them, but I'm disappointed for the ACC, and I think this conference just becomes more and more watered down and is going to keep falling behind, and the head of the ACC should be ashamed, and they need to throw his butt out. He needs to be gone. He's not aggressive. The ACC should have been expanding years ago. I thought this years ago. They sat by and every other conference made a move and the ACC just sat there and kept getting more pathetic and more pathetic. And it's honestly just, just getting worse. So anyways, the ACC's grant of rights, they get about 35 to 40 million every year all the way through 2036. The buyout as of right now, it's about $120 million. So it's huge. That's the only thing keeping Florida State and Clemson in as of right now. But if you have a $120 million buyout and you go to the Big Ten and make an extra $40 million, you can pay your buyout in three years. And then just it's sheer profit. So that's not going to hold them at bay forever. Adding these teams is not going to hold them at bay forever at all. So I kind of think that this is a question of competence at, at this point. So what does Stanford and Cal bring football-wise? So Stanford has seven double-digit win seasons in their football history. Let that sink in. Seven double-digit win seasons in their history. Cal has seven double-digit win seasons in their football history. Four are from before 1950. So in the last 73 years, they've only won double-digit games three seasons. That's with Jared Goff and Aaron Rodgers. So that just shows you the level, the the state of these football programs that is supposed to save the ACC. Okay. David Shaw, the previous Stanford coach, fired. Um, he had a good run there for a while, and then it just crashed and burned. His final stretch there, 14 and 28 over the last four years. So that's basically what we're looking at right now from Stanford. 
Look at Stanford's basketball program. That's the next most popular sport. Are they at least good at that? One tournament in the last 15 years for Stanford. One tournament. Cal, six tournaments in, in the last... It's in six in the last 20 years. It's not hard to make the tournament. What, 64 teams get in? You can't be in the top 64 teams in your sport? I mean, come on. 2022, Stanford drew 29,965 fans. That was 68th in college football. 68th. Okay. They're not popular with their own fan base. Uh, So Stanford fell behind Boise State, which technically would have been a better pickup and is actually a successful football program. They fell behind East Carolina. They're at least on the Atlantic coast, so they're on the right side of the country. They fell behind Fresno. They fell behind Navy. All of these other very small schools drew bigger crowds to their games. Cal, not much better. 38,596 fans. That's 59th. So they're both not popular at all with their fans. Stanford, from 2015 until now, in the Pac-12, their attendance was 10th in their own conference. Cal, since 2015, 11th. So they're both in the bottom three of their conference in attendance. That's what we're adding to the ACC. That's what's supposed to save the ACC. Okay. Stanford basketball, 2022 to 2023. So this past season, they had 3,518 fans on average. That was 130th in the country. Okay. Cal, 2,155. 187th in the country. So we're getting unpopular football teams and massively unpopular basketball teams. That's what we're bringing in. But the gymnastics, who has 20 fans, they have great gymnastics. Okay. Um, You know, there's a McCarthy story from when he went there. He said he was playing UCLA Bruins. He had 243 yards, four touchdowns that game. It was at home. He's coming back from the game. He's on his bike. He gets back to the dorm. And all of his friends are playing video games. And they say, hey, where were you tonight? And he goes, I was at the football game. He had a historical Stanford Cardinals game. His own roommates, the people at his dorm, had no clue he was even playing the game. That lets you know he's the greatest player in modern history, you know, besides luck, to have played at Stanford and no one even knew he was playing there or that the game was going on, or that he had just made history. So that lets you know the fans, the people at the school, don't care. It's not a knock on Stanford. It's a fact. So that's kind of how that's going. So supposedly the ACC is going to make about an extra 50 to 60 million off of this since these schools are basically taking no money. But a lot of that's going to go to... um, bonuses and stuff like that they said so let's just say they make the top 60 million and then you give 20 million payouts to certain teams doing certain things so let's just say that that leaves 40 million in in the pot that's going to be broken up amongst 14 to 15 teams 40 so they're making two to three million dollars extra per year that's what these ac teams are getting meanwhile the big 10 is getting almost 80 million dollars in revenue per year and them making an extra two to three million just because these schools are taking no money that's supposed to make the difference what happens when they start making their full money you're going to be taking losses cuts now i mean it and the acc is not going to get a better contract because the good teams are leaving it's going to be going down florida state and clemson are gone miami needs to pack their bags and get out too this is a sinking ship and it's only getting worse Stanford, 2022, 3 and 9. 2021, 3 and 9. 2020, 4 and 2. That's the COVID season. Doesn't count. 2019, 4 and 8. Most wins in the last four years, four games. Okay. Cal, 2022, 4 and 8. 2021, 5 and 7. 2020, 1 and 3. And 2019, 8 and 5. That's respectable. But that's pathetic. It's a program that's sliding backwards. And that's back when they had Sonny Dykes. And he's not even there no more. He's at TCU now. Uh, taking teams to the national championship. Anyways, so they say this is going to open recruiting doors out west. Good luck with that. You think Stanford and Cal, who no one goes to the games, that's going to attract recruits? Meanwhile, the Big Ten, who now owns the west, USC, the Bruins, Washington, Oregon, 
Where are the recruits growing? To the Stanford game with the 10,000 fans there? No. This is not helping of recruiting at all. It's a desperate grab. I don't blame the ACC because the ACC made their bed and they have to lay in it. The head of the conference failed and the conference is burning. They did what they had to do to try to maintain a certain number of teams so that they can keep their Power 5 ranking. But at the end of the day, to me, this is just going to keep pushing Clemson and Florida State out. They're going to leave. It's it's sad to see what's happened to college football with uh, realignment. Um, but the ACC, I, I understand why they did it, but I think it was a pathetic move and they should have started moving the chess pieces years ago. And they could have saved themselves from this doom. This doesn't save the conference. To me, it's just a band.